Venerable religious and dear parishioners, it occurred to me on this, now that we are at the last Sunday of May, that I hadn't given a sermon on the Holy Rosary yet during this very Marian month that we observe every year. What a sweet and beautiful month it is to just uh, keep meditating and celebrating and reflecting on how blessed we are to have the Queen of Heaven and Earth, who is God's mother, as our mother as well. And one of the strongest possible ways to bind us to our Heavenly Queen and Mother is the Holy Rosary. So I wish to reflect upon the Holy Rosary, and yes, on this feast of the Holy Trinity. Catholic devotion so often expresses that wonderful relationship that Our Lady has with each member of the Holy Trinity. And remember, this is the one person that never, ever, in any way, shape, or form, ever displeased, disobeyed, was unfaithful in any way to the Holy Trinity. And so we read how we honor her as the daughter of the Father, the most beloved daughter of the Father. She is also, in fact, the mother of the Son, the mother of his human nature, which makes her mother of God, because Jesus can't be divided in, in person. And also, by analogy, we say she is the spouse of the Holy Ghost. We say she was conceived by the Holy Ghost. As the angel Gabriel said to her, the Holy Ghost will overshadow thee. And this greatest of miracles will take place. God will become man in thy womb. And so the rosary is a way to honor this most glorious production of the Holy Trinity, you might say, Mary. Isn't that an amazing thing to, see, to say? God is the only one that could have created his own mother. Can any of us have created a mother, our mother? It's impossible in every way because we certainly don't have the power of creation. Then we came after our mothers. How could we have possibly created them? But God could. But in the Holy Rosary, we do not just honor Our Lady. We honor God. We honor her who was made by God. And I want to point out how the Holy Trinity is present in at least or very obviously in at least some of the mysteries of the rosary, and of course the Holy Trinity is there throughout all 15 decades. We are honoring Mary, but we are especially honoring God. Let's look at the joyful mysteries. The first joyful mystery, the Annunciation. The Holy Trinity is there. All three persons are most involved. The angel Gabriel is sent by the Father as an ambassador. God the Father could have appeared, but he sends his angel. And remember, angels are ambassadors. Ambassadors are honored as though the sovereign were present himself. They are accorded that kind of dignity. So the angel Gabriel is speaking on behalf of the Father and says, in a, I'm paraphrasing the angel Gabriel, but says, the angel is saying, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Will you accept this most glorious, but also a role which involves such incredible pain and sacrifice? Will you be the mother of the Redeemer? And Mary says yes to the Father. And in that moment, 
through the operation of the Holy Ghost, the third person, she becomes the mother of the Son. So when you pray the first joyful mystery, remember you're not just honoring Mary. You're honoring the Father who, yes, asked the consent of Mary. Will you do this? And she says, behold the handmaid of the Lord. She knew who her heavenly father was. And she became the mother of his son through the power of the Holy Ghost. And then, of course, we, we see Jesus present in all the other joyful mysteries. Now the father and the Holy Ghost are not as obviously present, but remember the three divine persons work together. Only the Son became man, but nevertheless, what, the, what one does, the other does. But our Lord in that unique way, because he alone has that human nature, the Father and the Holy Ghost do not have a human body and soul, but they are working together. And we see in the visitation, the nativity, the presentation, the finding in the temple, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, but the Father and the Holy Ghost are there. We, we go now to the sorrowful mysteries. What do we hear Jesus saying in his agony when he is bleeding in his sweat, in his terror? Father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass. Yet not my will, but thine be done. The Father is there. The Holy Ghost is not mentioned explicitly, but the Son is submitting to his Father. And he's saying yes to the Father. Isn't that interesting? The first joyful mystery is about Mary saying yes to the Father. The first sorrowful mystery, Jesus saying yes to his Father in the most painful, terrified way that he was experiencing. But he said yes. And don't think that the Father... Of course, he couldn't suffer as a human being, but what does every parent want to do when they see their children suffer? They want to take that pain of their child on themselves. This was not the father sitting on his white throne just saying, "Go, son, go and suffer. If the father had a human body, had a, hum had a, had a soul, he would suffer too. But it was necessary for our redemption that such a price be paid. That shows the evil of sin. And throughout the sorrowful mysteries, we see the son obeying his father in the most terrible of sufferings and death. He was obedient unto death, the death of the cross. So you see the father is there. The Holy Ghost, again, not as clearly, but nevertheless, the three persons working together. And then we see the sorrowful mother there. She's, if she's not right by the side of Jesus, she is with him every step of the passion, suffering everything that he went through in his body, in her soul, in her emotions, in her innermost being. And then in the glorious mysteries, we see the Holy Trinity so clearly mentioned. Jesus rises from the dead. Also, it's correct to say the Father raised him from the dead. Again, Jesus is both God and man. Jesus ascends into heaven on his own power. He had promised the Father and I will send you the Holy Ghost. You see, we're meditating on this as we pray the rosary. And then what happens on Pentecost? The Holy Ghost descends in the form of tongues of fire. He was sent. Jesus said, unless I go, the Holy Ghost will not come to you. The Father and I will send him to you. And then we 
meditate on the fourth and fifth joyful mystery, uh, glorious mysteries, the assumption, Our Lady being taken up into heaven by the power of God, and who does she go to be with? With her heavenly Father, with her Son, with her spouse, you might say, by analogy, the Holy Ghost, and receives the crown for her faithfulness. So let us be reminded over and over again the power of the rosary. It's not a sacrament. It's not as great as the holy sacrifice of the Mass. But it is so powerful that it will bring about world peace and countless other blessings. Again, what did Our Lady say 101 years ago at Fatima? when it came to bringing to an end the worst war the world had ever seen, the war to end all wars, it was called. 20 years before a worse war broke out. Pray the rosary for peace. Do you believe in the power of your rosary beads? I don't mean the beads themselves. They have to be used you can make world peace happen. Not by yourself, but you can play a key role if you pray the Holy Rosary. We have the very word of God's mother telling us this. Why are we so weak in our devotion and in in our faith in the power of the Holy Rosary? And why does Our Lady want the rosary prayed? Because it disposes us to receive all the more graces from the Mass and the sacraments. Our Lady certainly knew that there would come a time when the Mass and the sacraments would disappear from most people who call themselves Catholics. We, we've studied this over and over again, the devastating changes in the liturgy the, the sacraments, they become invalidated in the new church of Vatican II. And this reminds us of that prophecy. And I was doing a little bit of research on it this morning. Who said that prophecy that one day through the rosary and the scapular, the world will be saved? There was a meeting in Rome in the 12th century between... St. Francis of Assisi, who was the founder of the Friars Minor, a meeting with St. Dominic, founder of the Order of Preachers, and also with St. Angelus, who was a Carmelite. And prophecies were uttered when these three saints met. As a matter of fact, I was reading John Haffert of the Blue Army years ago mentioned there's actually a spot in Rome designated as the place where these three met. I, would like to, I hope I can see it someday. Because it was at that spot that, first of all, Angelus, St. Angelus, prophesied to St. Francis that he would receive the stigmata. And then it was St. Dominic's turn. He said, Angelus, to you, to your order will be given this most powerful thing called the brown scapular. Now, this Carmelite's already had a scapular, but the brown scapular that would be accessible to all Catholics, to you will be given the brown scapular, and to my order of preachers will be given the Holy Rosary. And one day, through the rosary and the scapular, the world will will be saved. I believe that prophecy, and I hope you do too. We've not been deprived of the Mass and the sacraments. We could be in the future. If that were to happen, we would have to hold on to the rosary and scapular more than ever before. But even now, Pray the rosary, wear the scapular devoutly. You're going to save, help save the world. This world that is descending into the 
ever more into the chaos and corruption of sin. The rosary changes people's lives. You know, one of the most astounding things that St. Louis Reed of Montfort says in his book, The Secret of the Rosary, is even if you've sold your soul to the devil, if you devoutly pray the rosary, by the way, I can think of no more worst case scenario than that. To sell your soul to the devil, or give your soul to the devil. I mean, you're, you're inviting the diabolical possession. You have ab you've apostatized from God. You've apostatized from your faith. I can't think of anything worse. But even if you had done that, and you say, I'm going to pray the rosary, she, Our Lady will save you. She'll bring you back to Jesus. You'll die in the state of sanctifying grace. You're not that bad off. So, St. Louis's words ring so true. Doesn't matter how bad of a situation you have, no matter how many problems you may have, if you pray the rosary, you will return to Jesus. You will be in his good graces. You will not perish. So on this magnificent feast of the Holy Trinity, let us, through the graces that we receive, through the devout praying of the Holy Rosary, let us submit to the Holy Trinity, obey the Holy Trinity, keep the law of God, be faithful sons and daughters of Holy Mother the Church, and remember the graces just never stop flowing. The better you pray the rosary, and also remember the more people you pray it with, the more graces you receive. Let us be known for our devotion to Our Lady's most holy rosary, which of course will bind us to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.